He is the author, speaker, well-known Federation Mitchell Merchants. He is CEO at Red Circle Network, blockchain dome founder, founder of Open Glen. So, Glenn McLean, welcome. Hello, Glenn. Hi. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. And let's start your event. Very good. All right, then. So if we go to the uh, first slide, I'd just like to welcome uh, those that have just come into Blockchain Day Online. And on the second slide, my name is Glenn McLean. For the next 60 minutes, I'd like to help you grow your cryptocurrency wealth. For legal reasons, I need to disclose that I am not a financial advisor. I'm not authorized by your country to give you investment advice. However, I'm here to reveal which technology platforms you can use to grow your value. I won't go through all the platforms, just let you know the ones that I trust 100%. Platforms that I have thoroughly researched, I personally used myself and can stake my reputation on as a technology advisor. Platforms that will set you up to grow your value. You don't need to take notes uh, because I've put together a, a free information website, which I will give you the link to. You can go there and get the information whenever you want at no cost to you. Our journey today will take us through three easy steps to cryptocurrency wealth. So let's take a look at those steps to value. The first step is to be able to access and secure your value reliably. It doesn't matter how fancy a wallet is. If you can't access your value, and if you can't secure your value safely or get it when you need it. In my experience, beyond accessibility and security, speed is everything. So we will focus on the wallets that are fast, that get it done quickly. And we'll move on to how you can exchange your value so that you can exploit the opportunity that emerging ICOs and altcoins present safely and securely. Conservatism is a key to value. You want to be able to swap what you have for something that you want. The problem is that many coins can't be easily swapped. So if you can't swap it, the coin has much less value. Lastly, we will take a look at cloud mining, which is the most successful method for everyday people to access cost-efficient cryptocurrency mining. I'm not going to talk about setting up your own physical machine and managing this at home, unless you own a power station or have access to free power. This is a bad idea for value. Cloud or, or cloud-based or third-party managed mining has produced genuine percentage gains and is grossly undervalued. The real issue here is whether the mining is real or just some Ponzi scheme that looks great, but is illegal. There are huge amounts of scams online and many people think they are real. Binary, binary options, for example, uh, has had a lot of scandal. Multi-level marketing experts have taken over the cryptocurrency industry in many places. Many are illegal and will eventually be taken down. I will show you the two that in my experience have paid out yields. I'll also introduce you to a special new real mining operation that will give you an advantage. That doesn't mean that these mining operations will always return high value, but they have paid dividends and the value they have is real. I'm 
Unfortunately, uh, this presentation is not a presentation where I can share my screen and do uh, some of the uh, fancy things that I would normally do. Um, so what I've done for you to make your life easy is to put all of this information up for free on mindthebitcoins.com. So that link you're seeing right now, feel free to go to that anytime you like and all the information and more that I've shared here will be available to you for free. Thanks to your registration with AEM and Blockchain Day Online. The other website um, that I'm sharing is Mind the Ethereum. So very similar to Mind the Bitcoins, uh, the Mind Ethereum is specifically about Ethereum. Lots of free resources there for those that uh, would like to follow Ethereum. Give you an idea of what the website looks like. Uh, we'll bring up this next slide. And so you can see uh, there it is. So on the start menu, you'll click on start and you'll see a menu system for mining and for wallets. And I have video reviews explaining the wallets and, and why they're good. But I'll just summarize a few. So looking at wallets, there are lots of wallets. The most important thing to think about is getting the right wallet for your country, because you probably want to connect your local bank account. And most of these wallets will connect to your credit cards, your debit cards, and to your local bank account. Some of them are better than others, but the most important thing is speed. Can you get your, your value in there quickly? And can you get it out of the wallet quickly? Is it safe? Most of them are safe. They use two-factor authentication, which is essentially using your mobile phone for, for security. I won't talk much about security in this session, uh, but I've done a lot of security and Bitcoin recovery work, including working with the authorities worldwide. Uh, all of these wallets are, are very safe wallets to use, and they have some fantastic features. But go online to, to minebitcoins.com and get a little bit of more information from there. I'll just move forward because there's some real juicy information coming up soon. Talking about mining, so although cloud mining has a lot of fraud and Ponzi schemes, these two cloud mining operations are legitimate. Genesis has returned a five times ROI, five times return on investment on an initial BTC or Bitcoin investment. Uh, that's real world. Uh, that's not imaginary. That actually happened. Galaxy has returned a whopping real world 85 times ROI on Ethereum. Mind you, that's getting in very early with Ethereum before while well, Ethereum was around about $2. And obviously it's a lot more valuable now. Uh, so the 85 times return comes on uh, the improvements in, in the value of the cryptocurrency. Uh, these are not accurate ROI percentages going forward because mining is becoming difficult, it is harder, the more people that get into it. And so it's a good idea to mine coins that uh, have less degree of difficulty. I'll come up to that in a minute. Yields are lower now, realistically. However, this does tell you that rewards occur within these mining operations. But you know, they're real, they have real yields and returns. The rewards have been paid out in spendable value, money that you can actually spend. So on the next slide, I talked about an opportunity to get into mining early on. Uh, before the degree of difficulty is hard. And it's quite hard to, to afford machines to do mining. Uh, CPU mining is, is difficult to get into. CPay uh, is a special scoop for you. CPay is a payments platform that I am a consultant advisor on. This is an excellent company which will be commercializing data interchange payments globally, connecting with major payment providers. I began CPU mining with them today just today actually, and I do recommend uh, that this is a good mining operation. Feel free to visit the link on this page to get started on your PC. Anyone can do this. This is automated mining. Uh, I've launched this for the first time here 
in this session. So you'll be amongst the, the first that I've told uh, about this operation. When the app is open, after you've downloaded the CPay app to your Windows desktop, it will start mining. Uh, when closed, it will stop mining. So you have complete control and you can trust this. So on to the next slide, CPay combines AliExpress, so that's AliPay, eBay, Visa, and PayPal without using debit or credit cards. So throw away your cards and use your smartphone and cryptology, just like WeChat Pay or AliPay. So for example, in China, 100% of the purchases that you make, you'll use a mobile phone. You won't use a Visa debit, you won't use a MasterCard or a credit card of any kind. You will use your phone. And this application will provide that kind of payment service on the blockchain. I will be talking about the ICO example of CPay tomorrow as a real world case study to disrupt debit and credit cards. So I highly recommend taking a look at, uh, at this for your wealth value. On to exchanges. There are so many exchanges now. Uh, when I first started out, uh, there were just a couple of exchanges and now we have dozens of exchanges. And in fact, wallets now provide exchange. Exchange meaning that you can swap one cryptocurrency for another. Often this is called peers, P-A-I-S. <laughs> Excuse my accent from uh, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, but as you see here, there's a list of the exchange that I have used. You'll have this in the documentation so you can go and check them out. Uh, but the one that I like the most and that has just been bought by a large payments company worldwide is Polino. So, so we'll just go to the next slide and I'll talk about that. So here you can see uh, the Polino screen. Now I don't know how much detail you can see on your screen, so I'll just talk to what you can see here. Uh, because when we're talking about using the exchange, one of the guys that comes after me in presentations through Blockchain Day Online will give you more details about trading. So I'm just going to simplify this for you and keep it easy. One, two, three. To the right hand side, you see the markets where you have a, a small three letter uh, definition for uh, each of the cryptocurrencies, like ETH for ETH and BTC for Bitcoin. You can click on that and it will reveal to the left hand side. Uh, the buy, stop, and sell for each of those digital currencies in, in the exchange mode. Uh, if you have cryptocurrency inside uh, the system, it will show under your balance where it says buy ETH. Uh, it'll have uh, your balance in BTC. You'll then be able to spend as much as that as you want in buying ETH, and you do the same thing for buying any other um, alternative coin, so altcoin within the exchange. So again, the more complicated and detailed a presentation of how to do trading will come from another person. This is the simple one. And so quite simply, you'll choose what you want to trade on the right hand side. Uh, you'll then choose how much you want to spend on the left hand side under buy. If you want to sell, but you'll click on the amount that you want to sell and you'll push the button and sell. It's that simple. So there's how to use an exchange really simply. Again, more a detailed trading information will come later. All right, so let's move on. The million dollar question is how do I decide which cryptocurrency uh, to, or which alternative coin to buy? Because this is where you're gonna make your wealth. Rather than go through all the cryptocurrencies and show you you know, dozens to hundreds to thousands of cryptocurrencies could be well over a thousand. Um, what if I teach you the underlying philosophy to be able to make your own wise decision? So the best predictor for future performance is past behavior. So let's go back to the past. Market capitalization. So let's look at the size of the opportunity. Market capitalization means how much cryptocurrency there is in circulation at any time. 
some of you guys are real experts. You really know your stuff. You're trading already. You're doing really well. We know that at the moment, this fluctuates wildly and is volatile. This is normal during the early adoption of any new technology to be introduced. Here, you see today's most recent scope of the market, a market capitalization of 275 billion. Wealth is created when we buy altcoins low. Over to the right-hand side, you can see altcoins and you, know, you can see that there's a large volume of altcoins being traded. And then we sell them high on the left-hand side as the market capitalization goes up, um, we are able to, to sell and make some money. Everyone wants to know where the market will go. Transaction fees averaging $3 per transaction and a huge market for transaction fees growth with adoption. And the most of the exchange activity happening is around altcoins. So we can see where that value is going. Cryptocurrency will replace fiat cash money but you only see a small level happening at the moment. So let's look at a pathway to transform your value. As the slide comes up, putting the world's money into perspective. So I want you to think about the big picture just for a minute. Let's get away from the detail and look at the big picture. That the money market's worth $83.6 trillion. At the moment, on this chart, it, it quickly built up from $100 billion worth of value to the right-hand side there in, in all cryptocurrencies to now $275 billion. So you can see that it's growing. It's growing beyond uh, $275 billion it'll grow to at least a trillion. It'll then get to, to equal the US dollars in circulation. And it will go beyond that. And eventually, you know, digital currencies or cryptocurrencies uh, will become a primary means for of value and value exchange. And that has a value of around about uh, $85 trillion. next we look at where where are we where are we right now we're here we we're, we're the early adopters so you're early this is not a bad time this is a good time this is a great time to get involved in cryptocurrency we're about to cross the chasm what that means is that we're about to solve the issue of speed of cost and channels to market we're fixing this and so as we fix that we'll be able to move to a whole product solution and the early majority of adoption. And you can see that the early majority is a massive percentage. And so if you're in there now, in the early stages of cryptocurrency, and you're an early adopter, that means you're a pioneer and you're an innovator. Of course there's risk, of course there's volatility, as there would be with anything new. But cryptocurrency is poised to replace fiat cash, and we're about to see a trillion dollar market. Yes, but wait, uh, um, I, I hear some of you asking, uh, you have to tell me why should I believe? There's been so much misinformation, so much hype, uh, so much, um, so many lies. What, what is the real opportunity here? So I'm going to reiterate this in the next slide, which is that the size of the opportunity is that if cryptocurrency replaces cash, it could be worth more than $80 trillion. And to succeed at the growth of your value, you buy low and you sell high. So if you're getting in now, you're, you're relatively within you know, a, a context, getting in at an early stage still. I'm going to give you a, a, a bit of a history lesson around you know, why this opportunity has so much value to you uh, with this next slide. We're going to talk about checks 
you know, those old, you know, checks you wrote down. Some of you are old enough like me. I'm 49 and, and I wrote a check out and that was my, my form of value. And we, we all thought that checks were, were real. They were a representation of money. And then FPOS. Let's have a look at what happened there. So I think we, 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 dropped, we jumped around a little bit too far there. <laughs> We've gone too far. If we can come back to uh, on the slides to the to the uh, skull and crossbones with the checks. So checks. There we go. Okay. So you see a skull and crossbones. That means death. R.I.P. Checks. Checks died. Very few people are using checks today. But I'll tell you what. Uh, back before when checks were the main uh, form of payment, nobody thought that checks would die. Nobody thought that checks would go. Uh, very famous people wrote articles about how checks were going to stay. And they went on record with major financial organisations saying how checks would live forever. Okay, so now we can go to the next slide. But as you can see here, and with a smiley face, FPOS won. FPOS won the war. You right now are using a debit and credit card with electronic fund transfer at point of sale or EFT, electronic fund transfer, because FPOS won. So I want you to learn, learn from that story because here I'll, I'll, tell, I'll show you where it all came from. And, and I want you to relate this back to your investment in this new technology cryptocurrency to replace fiat cash currency. So we'll look at Haymark as an example and, and their adoption story. So how the New Zealand and Australia market uh, adopted FPOS very early on. So FPOS New Zealand had a fairly humble beginning, launching in 1984 via a bank computer connected to a Woolworths, which is a, a, a you know, food store, supermarket, and a shell service station, petrol station. Very humble. Beginnings. At that time, New Zealand's fledgling electronic transaction services fell into two camps, and it wasn't until four banks of the time decided to combine what was two networks into one entity in 1989 that Electronic Transaction Services Limited, Paymark, was born. With one company running a national real-time payments network, New Zealand led the world and still does. By March 1990, volumes through our network had exceeded 1 million transactions per month, and by 1994, we'd increased our infrastructure tenfold and could process volumes exceeding 10 million per month. Since then, Paymark Airpods has become so embedded, so trusted that the New Zealand public rely on Paymark to ensure that electronic purchasing is available wherever purchases for goods and services need to be made. I want you to think about that for a second because uh, these new blockchain and, and cryptocurrency companies are looking to replace these systems. So whatever scale they achieved, uh, Paymark and other companies achieved, this will be disrupted by cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. In the case of Paymark, they are the middleman, empowered to move money from the customer's account to the merchant's account, doing it reliably, safely, and securely. So anyone that knows about uh, cryptocurrency will, will know about that. But what did they achieve? So Paymark treated a transaction history in 2017 just in New Zealand, one of the smallest countries in the world. 1.4 billion transactions processed. Fees. Fees, 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 fees. 62 billion worth of transactions in New Zealand. In New Zealand alone. 70 card issuers. 140,000 terminals. So this is infrastructure just in one country around one technology that will be disrupted by cryptocurrency and blockchain. This is the kind of scale in the smallest country in the world. One of the smallest countries in the world. 4 million people. So Paymark grew their market share to over 75% because the New Zealand buying public 
if possible, is the cornerstone of their purchasing. Can you imagine, we've all got mobile phones now, suddenly we're all purchasing with our mobile phones instead of credit cards and debit cards. How convenient is that? Or a watch, your Apple watch, your Apple Pay, et cetera. We all use our debit and credit card 270 times per year on average. And, and so that's an amazing statistic. 60 billion, 1.2 billion transactions. Wow, that's amazing. So what comes next? RIP cash. Um, it'll go the way of the check because cryptocurrency uh, does a lot more, a lot better. And this technology will disrupt cash. So let's just wave goodbye for a moment. Bye cash. We enjoyed you for a while. <laughs> it was nice while well, we had you. We don't want you anymore. And of course, our friend, uh, cryptocurrency. So how does cryptocurrency work for me? Well, it's all about your identity. Now, there are two things about identity. Yes, of course, you give something away. Yes, of course, you're sharing something about yourself. But you're telling uh, companies how you want to be treated, the dignity, the respect that you want to be given. You're, you're choosing how you live your own life. And that would be the ultimate democracy if you could have uh, the free will to choose your preferences. That then goes into databases, big data, which learn about your preferences. They learn what you like, machine learning or artificial intelligence. Then feeds that, those preferences those likes and dislikes into smart contracts on blockchain. These smart contracts will then connect with the internet of things, devices that all have an IP address. And what those smart contracts will do is they'll take a little bit of your, uh, your cryptocurrency value and they'll instruct an internet of things device to do something that you want it to do. So for example, it could be a taxi, right? Ride sharing. And, or it could be a supermarket item. Your fridge, for example, this is a famous example, could order its own food just by telling your fridge, hey, fridge, um, I'm vegetarian. And your fridge says, well, here's the optimal uh, diet for you, vegetarian. Um, how much do you want to spend? And then it will go and do some bidding for you and get some fresh fruit and vegetables delivered to your home. Uh, that's going to provide convenience. And that's where we're heading in terms of the convenience of cryptocurrency, the Internet of Things, and uh, all this magic that it can do. So I've been talking about you know, three easy steps to crypto wealth, and I've been talking about that you've got to get into a wallet. You've got to get into uh, an exchange, you know, swapping you know, your cryptocurrency to buy cryptocurrencies that could grow in value. You've got to get into mining. And it's, it's a good idea to get into mining uh, coins which have, you know, the, the least uh, difficulty or resistance to them. You now know what to look out for as you choose those cryptocurrencies based on how they will replace fiat cash money. And also based on the operation of how they perform in commerce. Now, I'm going to head to um, um, a Q&A, um, but what I'll do is, un until I get questions or un until I'm told to uh, not to speak anymore, um, I'll say that I am ready for questions, uh, but I'm going to keep on speaking to you about some industry case studies until I'm you know, told to, uh, to be quiet, <laughs> so, so that you can get some more value uh, around the session. So let me just check to see how we're going with. Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, I must apologize. The sound of the messages in my uh, laptop, I can't um, stop that without turning off my volume to, to, uh, uh, to hear. So uh, my apologies for that. Uh, let me see if I can though. Hang on a tick. Try. Bear with me just a moment, guys. Thank you for your uh, patience. Do that. There we go. 
Uh, hi, Glenn. Correct. So we have uh, okay. your video. So, we have your voice. All perfect. I, I think we've gone through many questions now. If I could just ask the um, the team here, where will I see or how will I find um, questions? Okay. Yes. All questions will be in a personal cabinet on website, on Telegram channel, and already maybe, um, we have some questions through the uh, through the chat on. Okay. Yeah, then I'll look at that. Okay. So let's talk about uh, value. So, so how do I determine you know, the value of a cryptocurrency? What I what I do is this. Um, I've worked with in the accounting and finance industry um, in business process improvement, transforming accounting advisory. And accounting advisory fundamentally is about you know, the value of a business. How do you establish the value of a real business? And this is a really simple uh, method that you might like to write this down because this isn't in the notes. And, and what it is, and this is the, the method that you know, a lot of angel investors use where they determine the value of, of a company. So they ask a, some, a set of simple questions. They ask the question, what is it? So you know, what is the product? What does it do? And how does it help? So when we ask, what is it? Did you know that a lot of people don't actually have a product? Um, and so what is a product? A product is a problem and a solution at its most simple. And if you have a, um, a productization or for a cryptocurrency or for a blockchain solution, it must solve a problem and it must present a solution. Then the second thing is that it must have a large audience. It must have a channel to market. And that, that last thing is really important because a lot of uh, organizations, a lot of ICOs don't have channel partners. They haven't established the, the sell through. They haven't established the, um, a leveraged business model. Leverage meaning that um, you work through channels and partners. And so those that, one of the things you want to look out for when you're looking at an ICO, when you're looking at uh, cryptocurrencies, is you want to look at, do they have a channel to market? Have they got channel partners? Have they got traction with, uh, whether it's data interchange between uh, business to business organizations, or do they have a business to consumer channel to market? Because if they don't have that relationship, they can't scale which means they can't really grow into large numbers. So in my, just to take a step back a, a bit, when I uh, worked for uh, accounting and finance software companies, um, I worked my way up from a uh, national partner manager in, in New Zealand. Uh, earlier than that, I, I worked for uh, Apple. Earlier than that, uh, I worked for um, MYOB, the accounting software company, as a partner evangelist. Um, but at attaché software in the medium to, to large size uh, enterprise level business, uh, working with businesses of uh, SMEs or small to medium enterprise businesses from 3 million to around 10 million turnover and to 100 million turnover. Um, we were introducing business process optimization. So to free up the 10% value locked up in the business. And I worked on pilot programs with the, uh, uh, the accounting industry um, as a first as a national partner manager, then as a channel development manager. So I mentioned the keyword channels. You want to look for those channels to market. And then uh, more recently, a few years ago, uh, as an international manager across Australia and New Zealand, um, heading up advisory, uh, working with all channel partners, and in fact creating 80, so that's eight zero channel partners for uh, attaché software to pick and choose from in terms of their uh, go-to-market strategy for up to $30 million worth of new revenue growth. And so my job was to create um, business or industry transformation engines with technology that would deliver value to um, industry transformation uh, to, to multiple stakeholders within an industry and then therefore value back to our software company. And so having worked in those technology companies in SaaS, you know, software as a service, you know, cloud technologies, um, the work I did with the accounting industry 
um, earned recognition uh, through the submission of my results uh, as the best cloud product in 2014. And that was based on results like uh, we had, um, I'm trying to remember the numbers now, we had um, uh, 51 accounting firms, we had 150 accountants, we had 1,500 uh, small to medium enterprise businesses. Uh, we produced 700% growth for the accounting firm. So it's a one stakeholder uh, achieves 700% growth in their advisory revenues for the accounting industry. And, and so that did transform the accounting industry. Uh, and then uh, some of the programs that I developed were adopted uh, by the industry as an industry standard. And so um, as a person that's worked doing that sort of work, what I'm saying to you is that I'm able to look at um, blockchain technology and, and, I'm, and I want to pass this on to you. You're able to look at blockchain technology and the cryptocurrencies that are associated with it and look to how are they transforming their industry? Not just how are they disrupting their industry, but this is where you, you can become emotionally intelligent, intelligent Sorry about your growth of your investment. So how are, how are they collaborating? So I call this collaborative innovation. So we move beyond disruptive innovation to working together and partners working together to transform an industry. So, so what I'm saying to you is this, when you see a cryptocurrency, when you see a blockchain project with collaboration and people working together nicely, uh, harmoniously, that's when you're going to see um, true industry transformation, like the kind that I saw when I was working uh, in Attaché software. One of the projects I worked on was with IBM who were a, in some ways a competitor to us, and also with SAP, who were a competitor to us. Uh, but some of the business engines and, and the industry transformation models that I created uh, as a manager in that area, um, fundamentally looked to collaborate with those competitors to, to mutual value. So I'm just looking at the notes here to see whether I'm, um, I can keep on talking. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I'm allowed to. I see some people are asking questions in the community itself. So what I might do is switch over from looking at what uh, Karina is saying and go to some of these messages and see what they're actually saying. So it's in the support community, I think. Uh, there we go. So let's see Chris Oliver. So I'm going to speak to you guys now, okay? Uh, Chris Oliver, hi. Um, you didn't make a screen of books. Can I get this presentation? Yes, you can get the presentation. One way or another, we'll get that to you. Have we got uh, Victor Menon? I'm so sorry. I don't speak uh, and read uh, Russian or Ukrainian, uh, but namaste. <laughs> uh, nice to, uh, to to see your words. Uh, Lena, you, you've translated uh, some things. Uh, you said uh, about our participants package. Thank you. Um, upgrade. Get those upgrades, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yep, ask, ask the, um, the beautiful people at AEM for those upgrades. They're, those upgrades are great. Um, you will get the speakers, speakers materials after the conference, but of course, um, I'm actually here uh, in Telegram. And uh, later on tonight, I'll share my links in Telegram uh, when I'm not actually presenting like this right now. Um, Irina, um, I see this more Russian, which I can't read. I'm so sorry. Uh, there we go. And I go down, down, down to what I can read. So, Daria. Hello, yes, Glenn, did the I'm here. the of blockchain, were they able to change the world and make it better? Um, what will okay, the, yes, the, I'm the, just the see from our one like client. Okay, thank you very much for um, for uh, trying to translate your um, you know, Russian or Ukrainian to English. I apologize that I don't speak your language. Um, it's, it's a beautiful language. So class, superb. Um, blockchain will change the world. The reason that it will is because we want things to happen faster. 
you know, I'm trying to transfer money from uh, New Zealand to Australia. My business is based in, in, in New Zealand, but I'm traveling around Australia building a business for a Red Circle Network. And I transfer my money with a traditional bank and it takes me hours. Um, the other day I did a consultancy with a man in um, Chicago and uh, he paid me in Ethereum and the Ethereum came through to me in about 60 seconds. So uh, we are going to disrupt global transfer of value. It's already happening. I don't want to use banks. In fact, uh, I, I use banks as little as possible. And hopefully um, we won't have to uh, deal with traditional banks anymore because they've taken all our value and they charge us all these unnecessary fees. Did you know that under AML, KYC, anti-money laundering and know your customer rules, they slow your money down. You are guilty until proven uh, innocent. Oops, no, I didn't hear the moderator, so let me just turn my volume on. Moderator, um, would you like to speak to me? Okay, yes, uh, Glenn, I okay, see yes. that you already uh, read. I see that you already read. Uh, but uh, if you need some I, advice, think so. I see another channel so when we uh, finish with uh, Victor Manning I have uh, three more questions for you okay just uh, tell me when yes. you are ready okay okay so what is the main message to community do we need blockchain in our life show us your use cases of using blockchain projects in your life well wow. Um, I would say that Ethereum is a, a big example of how I use uh, blockchain in my life. Um, you know, every single day, um, I buy my uh, food with uh, Ethereum and a coin jar uh, card, FPOS card. And so um, I, I live, I eat, I have my food uh, from Ethereum. And thank you. Thank you, Vitaly. Thank you, Russia, uh, for, for my food from Ethereum. And so you have some more questions. And Moderator. Then, uh, we have such a great question. So how do you think, does it possible to improve blockchain technologies in government system? Uh, well, uh, this is very important because at the moment, our government systems um, are not based on ethics, so E-T-H-I-C-S, human values, that um, a government must support the people. A government must represent the people. And the government must not support people. Um, people can pay taxes to support a country, and I think that's, that's a good thing. But I think that you know, governments need to become cost efficient. They need to be operationally efficient and reduce their costs. And so blockchain will provide an opportunity to decentralize uh, government, decentralize authority and regionalize and localize authority. And also uh, create uh, huge savings to reduce taxes for people. So, so I think that um, they may not want to do that, because they like to have our money. <laughs> What's the next question? Okay, great. Uh, Glenn, I know pretty well that you have a lot late evening in Australia, but I just can't handle and read this question. So, uh, Eric from Cologne asked you, how would you explain the blockchain technologies to your grandma? <laughs> My grandmother! I would say... In, in, oh wow, that's an interesting one. Uh, yeah. Babushka. Yes, Babushka. Yes, Babushka. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Babushka. Blockchain. Yes. <laughs> is <laughs> it, it would be it would be what would it be like? How would I explain that to grandmother? I don't know because she she couldn't relate to grandmother Babushka couldn't relate um, 
blockchain to anything that she knows, except for one thing. Um, back in Babushka's day, um, you know, she would um, resource-based economy. She would share, um, I will go to my neighbor and get some milk, um, or I will give my neighbor some eggs. And so uh, resource-based economy, um, sharing uh, resources between uh, people locally, uh, uh, it was done walking, <laughs> yeah, riding a horse, um, or more lately, uh, driving a car, and uh, we can speed that up with the internet. And so that resource-based economy for grandma, uh, where we're sharing our things, um, so the internet of things, we're sharing our things uh, can happen much more quickly. So grandma can stay at home and she can uh, make a nice clothing. Babushka makes the nice clothing and doesn't have to walk all the way uh, to her friend's house. She can, she can go uh, on the phone and, and send the chicken. <laughs> that's that's the easiest way I can I can say it's, it's hard because Babushka um, would find it difficult to relate. You've got another question for me. Oh, that's great and thanks a lot. When I read this question, first of all, I think about the kniting. Do you know that uh, uh, knight step by step each piece of scar or something else? Is, is, is this something looks like a blockchain? And you explained it much better than I am even imagine. And thanks you, Glenn. Thanks you very much. I am really appreciated that you were with us today. I'm uh, really glad that we can see uh, each other and uh, talk today. And maybe you can tell us uh, something from yourself. Maybe you have some uh, uh, wishes or ideas or just precious and graceful for our auditorium. Maybe you can give some great advice about the build blockchain future. Well, I think the future is about people. I want you to understand, so there are 28,000 people that registered for this event. Every single one of you matters. Your life matters. Your value matters. Your ideas matter. Blockchain, at its best, will have the opportunity to connect you from your, from your mobile device to the world. In, in the same way that here, here am I communicating with 28,000 people, maybe. I, I don't know exactly how many of you are, are there right now, but, but in the same way that I can reach 28,000 people, so can you. You can reach the people as well. And so this creates a voice for um, humanity and it creates a way that we can connect to each other. Because the world has become disconnected. We have become dissociative, which means that we are, we don't love our neighbor. You know, I, I am here in Perth, Australia, but, but I love you in Ukraine. I love you in Russia. I love you in Germany because we are the human race. And so blockchain has this great potential to connect us together. It has this potential to give you a voice and to, to connect you to ideas and to the value that go around ideas. And that's a huge benefit to, to you, to your family and to humanity. Everything that we have right now on, on old technology platforms is up for change. And so any one of you can come up with an idea to change the world. And I hope you do. And, and I believe you can. And that's what I'd like to say to you. Thanks a lot, Glenn. This is perfect. We love you so much too. Thanks you for this uh, conversation. I love you and uh, have a nice evening. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Yeah.
комьюнити платформа для всех тех, кто готов меняться. Возможно, у вас другие взгляды, или те же взгляды, это не имеет значения. Есть очень много кейсов. Partnership with Blockchain Dane is an important step for our project. Before going down, it was at peak values.